getting ready for the 250 East-West Showdown. Let's go down trackside. Here's Ricky Carmichael. Well, we've been talking about it. This track is totally changing every single time the riders are on it, okay? Check this berm out behind me. Look at all the lines right here. You have a low line, middle line, and a top line. What these riders want to avoid is getting up, and up here in the top, okay? This dirt up here is really, really, really loose and you can lose your front end if you get too high up on the bowl turns. So these guys got to be really, really paying attention when they come through this corner, not get too high, and they got to come out of this corner hard to get a good run through the whoops. Jenny. Hey, Ricky, thanks. Well, it is hard to believe that one of the oldest and most experienced riders in the 250 class had zero wins coming into this season, and that guy is Zach Osborne, but a lot has changed. He has four wins this season in the 250 East class, the most out of anyone, and he has had some ups and downs, but you know the words he lives by? He has an attitude of gratitude. He said, there have been ups and downs. In 2008, I left for England. I was there for four and a half years. I raced MXGP, came back in 2012, tried to get back in the swing of things, and the key to this year's success has been his team and the comfort. He loves working with them. Also, Elder Baker has made some great changes. He has worked hard to get to this point, and he does not want that to go to waste as he chases a championship tonight, guys. Well, his gate pick, he lines up 16th here tonight. His title contender, Smith, lines up sixth. Joey Sabachi lines up second. Could that play a role in the outcome of this championship? Don't forget, Justin Hill has already wrapped up the 250 West Championship. Jordan Smith leads Osborne and Sabachi by one for the East title. Discount tire with Spider Camp. The East and the West together for one time, one race in 2017. The East Championship on the line. Savacci trying to get to the inside. A big pile up. Smith got through. Looks like oh, Osborne is caught up in the midst of it. His bike is trapped underneath. That's, yeah, that's Alex's Alex. machine, the 70. Fork and down. Osborne is stuck and sees the championship leaving him behind. Wow, that is frustrating. That gate pick being on the outside just totally crushed his chances. Oh, Adam Cianciarulo, hang on on that number 36 as we watch Savanchi and Smith run second and third. And the way they're battling right now is going to have a huge impact on this championship. Can Savanchi get around his teammate, Adam Cianciarulo? Osborne has his work cut out for him for this championship. With a great start in second, Joey Savanchi followed right behind him the points leader, Jordan Smith. This is what it's all about. Now, Savachi has got one ally in this. He's got Adam Cianciarulo. Oh, oh Savachi went down. Smith goes by. There goes Davalos. There goes Hill. Savachi is not out of it. He's going to lock in just in front of Oldenburg. But Ricky, that is the problem that has bitten Savachi all year long. Yeah, it sure has. And he's going to have to give it his all if he wants this championship. It is all or nothing right here. He's got to lay it on the line. Well, now, Ralph, it all changes for Joey Sabachi. He got another great start. And once again, the 17 of Sabachi on the Monster Energy Pro Circuit Kawasaki makes a mental mistake. And that's what could have cost him the championship. He's got to get around Bowers first. Bowers up. Oh, Smith, Smith what a mistake. A Are you kidding me? The oh, pressure man. is on. It's eating these guys up alive. Right now, timing and scoring shows Smith leading by two over Savanchi, but everything's going to shake up here, and it's going to change. And guess what, Jeff? Cianciarulo, who is leading, is only five points behind Smith. Who knows where this thing goes? Osborne is back and forth. Let's take a look at our Toyota replay. Wow, what a start to this one. Okay, the first one, the mistake by the Husqvarna rider. Osborne right there in the middle of the screen, 16. Watch this. Oh, McElrath and Forkner go down. They take Osborne and Alex with them. Now here's Savachi on the first lap, just loses traction, lays the Kawasaki down, allows Smith to go by. And then Smith, Smith in a great position. He's just been given two gifts makes his own mistake, and this one could have cost him big time as he jumps off the side of the track, but he doesn't go down. 
and he still runs fifth, one position ahead of Savacci. So lucky he didn't land on that Yamaha top block. And another bite down. Is that Smith That's again? Smith. It is. Smith is down again. If they're not careful, Cianciarulo is going to win this championship. Now that's at the end of Monster. This is a very, very fast section. There's Adam. Adam, after getting his fourth hole shot of the year, leads this race over Hill, who won the West Championship. Melros, Davos, Sabachi. That's your top five. In the points, however, it's Sabachi now leading by six over seeing Cerullo. Smith drops to 16 back in third. Osborne 17 back in fourth. Ralph, Ralph, we have only been talking about Smith, Savachi, and Osborne for the last few weeks. We have counted Adam Cerullo out. Another mistake by Joey Savachi. Yeah. And Adam Cerullo, out of nowhere, will come through and steal this championship. The this rider, is unbelievable. Out of Florida, won his home race at Daytona on such an emotional night, has dealt with injuries, didn't even run a Supercross race in 2016, and Jenny, he might make some incredible history here tonight. And I can tell you guys, when we caught up today, I don't think he was thinking about a championship because he was just kind of overall assessing his season. Hey, I've made, I've made changes, I've made improvements, but I have by no means reached my potential. Those were his words to me. He said, I know I can do a lot more. This is what he was looking to cap off the season with a performance like this, guys. Well, and he's got a teammate. Justin Hill, your West Coast champion, running in second. Mel Ross is a great ride going on the Yamaha. And then it looks like Oldenburg has got past Sabachi as they come through. There's Jordan Smith, the Alpine Stars medical team, helping him off. Well, this is the fastest section of the track, 60 miles an hour down through here. And he goes to scrub that single into the sand. And watch this. He goes down so oh, hard. Just planted that shoulder. Wow. Oh, man. Oh, Jordan. Oh, man. Your points leader had an opportunity to win his first Monster Energy Supercross 250 title. There's two Adam. mistakes have taken him out of it. Sean Cerullo, Jeff, in 2014, the only year he ran the championship through the season, missed a few races, of course, due to injury even that year. That was his rookie year. He finished fourth in the East. Here he is with a shot at winning it tonight. And there's Hill, the West Coast champ, another one of Mitch Payton's strong riders on his Monster Energy Pro Circuit squad. Behind them will be Mel Ross. What a ride here for the 64 of Hayden Melross. Oldenburg will be next, which means Savachi has lost another spot, and Adam is now four points away. Well, and Savachi has lost another spot, and that's Ferrandis. That means it's down to three, and here comes another one right up the inside on Savachi. Now is Plessinger, and there he goes, and guess what? It's down to two. And Ralph, one lap ago, Joey Sabachi was in front of Oldenburg. He was in front of Ferrandez. He was in front of Plesker. He loses three spots. And if he's not careful, you've got McAdoo and Dakotas right there also. And Jeff, if they end up tied with Adam winning here tonight, to go along with his win at Daytona, he would have two. Sabachi only has one, which was the season opener on the East Championship. Adam would win this title. What a story in our 250 East-West Showdown. Ricky, how difficult is this for Sabachi to get his head back in the game? He's really struggling to get this done. Yeah, he sure is. Now, he knows that he has to get 11th, okay, to win this championship. No, no worse than 11th to win this championship if his teammate wins, I'm assuming. So uh, he's got to get after. He's got to get over whatever is happening and make it happen. He's had two gifts given to him today. He's got to drive forward. Savachi well, can really only afford to lose one more spot, Jeff. Yeah. Because he would he would win this by one point. He can't afford to be tied. Yeah, but the problem is right now, Jimmy Dakotas, right there behind him, 57, who yep. won his heat race. He's he flying. is flying there tonight. He got a horrible start. Dakotas was 12th 
McAdoo was 11th on the first lap. And both these riders are working their way forward. Takotis on that Geico Honda. And McAdoo coming right along with him on another one. The pressures. Takotis has been fourth twice this year, Jeff. As you mentioned already, winning his heat earlier today. The opening heat of the night. And he's on him. Well, and the pressure has been on Savachi. It's been on Smith. It's been on Osborne all the way through this championship. The rider that really hasn't had much pressure on him is Adam Cianciarillo. And he's riding a flawless main event. Six oh. minutes, six and a half minutes plus a lap left to go. This win may win him the title. Osborne is caught up to Fortner. That would be for 13th. Osborne has moved up to third in the points due to the crash of Smith, and he is seven out of the championship. So even though he's buried deep, Jeff, he's not out of this yet mathematically by a long shot. Man, anything what a can night. happen. We're only we're only halfway through this main event, a little past the halfway, and we still got the 450 main to go. Don't count anything out of this storyline. Savachi fighting to hang on. Can he win this championship? Getting the encouragement by his mechanic right now. So much has happened, and it is hard to keep your focus out there. And Sabachi, last time around, just turned a 1089, which is actually his best lap. Your leader, 107.1, is his fastest. Seeing Cirillo. It's hard to believe after all that, the points are only separated with Sabachi out front of Cian Cirillo by two and Osborne six back right now in points. And don't forget, Jeff, all three of these title come back. Savachi, Cian Cirillo, there goes Dakotas, right up the inside. Savachi trying to come back. He leaps past him. Can he hang on? He does for now. Savachi, Cian Cirillo, and Osborne all looking for their very first Monster Energy Supercross Championship as we watch from Discount Tires Spider Cam. Osborne, or I'm sorry, Savachi guarding those inside lines. He's not going to allow Dakotas any sort of line there. Justin, mechanic for Joey Savachi, cheering his rider on. Four and a half minutes and one lap to go before somebody is crowned the 2017 Eastern Regional Champion. Who's it going to be? Savachi? Sees the position go to Dakotas. Well, that's going to be one point, one point now between Adam run. and Savachi. And Osborne, who is now running in 13th, one spot behind Mapplerap, is now five back. Oh, man. Four minutes and one lap to go before somebody achieves a dream. And two other riders live out a nightmare here in Las Vegas. And Osborne, who sets at 13th, is about 10 seconds behind Joey Sabachi right now. And Dakotas is just pulling away from it. So you got to wonder, how long will it take for McAdoo to run down Sabachi? There's nobody left for Cian Cerullo to pass. He's doing everything he can do. What he needs right now is this man, Cameron McAdoo, to catch the 17 of Sabachi and pass him. If that happens, this championship gets handed to Adam C. and Cirillo. Last time around, McAdoo ran a 109.2, Savachi a 109.9. So McAdoo is actually quicker than and your points leader, Savachi, right now. And don't forget, Cameron McAdoo, that young man right there on that Geico Honda, we saw him here last October on our live coverage of the Monster Energy Cup as a young man winning the amateur all-stars race. He is a rookie here in 250 competition. And Jeff, he is making quite a debut on this Geico Honda. He's only been on it for a few weeks. And boy, Jenny, things are getting pressure packed for Joey Savacci. And the message, Ralph, in his short and sweet pass. They realize that at this point he needs to get moving. That is the message on his pit board from Mechanic Shanti, guys. Don't forget, Osborne now up to 11, trying to reel in Harrison, who's in 10. Jeff Osborne's only three back. He's three back, but the problem is for Osborne is he's about, well, he's closing it up. He's only about seven seconds off, off of Sabaji. If Osborne could come back, 
from that first turn crash and past Joey Sabatsi. Sabatsi, by the time they get to the checkered flag, that would could be enough for Osborne to win this title. And Osborne has four wins. Atlanta, Indy, Toronto, and last week. So that gives him four. He owns all the tiebreakers. Man, what a story this is going to be to the finish with just about a minute and a half and one lap to go. Cameron McAdoo trying to catch Savachi. That would be Savachi's in eighth. McAdoo's in ninth. And there's Osborne on the right side of your screen. He's trying to catch up to Harrison. And meanwhile, seeing Cerullo, seven seconds in front of Hill. Oh, and Savachi goes around the outside of Dakotas. Dakotas nope, looks nope. back, no pass yet. Jimmy trying to hang on to the spot. And meanwhile, McAdoo's still trying to catch them both. Ralph, Joey Savachi has been in a prime position to win this championship from the, the first race of the season. He has made so many mistakes along the way that have cost him big time. And it's hard to believe that right now he is still in the position to win this title. He cannot afford any more mistakes. Jeff, if the he's one you gotta watch it. though is on the right side of the screen. Osborne gets another one. He is now one point behind Sabachi with that pass. And there he is at the top of the screen. He's only about four seconds behind Sabachi right now. And it's going to be two laps to go. So about a lap, lap and a half left. And that's the, that's the gap. Jeff, he's going to make a pass here. And he's going to have an opportunity to see Sabachi in front of him. Here we Keller. go. He's battling with Harrison there. You can see now Harrison comes back around and that takes that point away. And Mel Ross oh, is on man. his way back to 64 right there. Yep. And that, that could be a little gap. Could certainly help Savanchi out here. He needs going to be zeros on the clock. OK, let's set the stage. We're looking at two to go right now. Cian Cirillo leads. He's 7.3 up on Hill. Savachi has a points lead by one over Osborne and seeing Cerullo. Osborne has all the tie breaks. What's going to happen here in our 250 East West Showdown? Osborne is four seconds behind Savachi. Savachi is still trying to catch Mel Ross, who's a second in front of him. There he goes. And Osborne is about a half a second a lap quicker than Joey Sabachi. You're going to see him creep into the screen. There he is. Look at the top right on the white Husqvarna. That's the gap. That's the difference for Osborne to win this title. He's going to have about a lap to go when he catches, if he catches Sabachi. That's the gap. About the length of that triple jump right there. White Sabachi flag. needs to pass Mel Ross to get himself a little bit of insurance. Oh, he can't afford to get too close to Mel Ross and have something go wrong. White flag is out. They're coming to the final lap. That's if the Sabachi gap. just stays where he is, he's going to win it by one over Cian Cerullo and Osborne. So, oh, man. How is it going to play out? Cian Cerullo doing everything he can. Savachi makes a pass. Here comes Osborne. Savachi now has two. Two to the good on Osborne and Adam Cian Cerullo. But here comes Osborne. Can he get the pass made and win this race wow. to the championship here tonight and take it away from Savachi? There's Meanwhile, the gap. Cian Cerullo out in front and leading. Here comes Osborne, closing in. He's got to get around Mel Ross before he can do anything with Savachi. Cian Cerullo takes the second win of the year. Now what happens behind him? Here comes Savachi. Here comes Osborne. A couple of lanes to go. Osborne's here. The battle is on to the checkers in the title. Osborne to the inside. Takes him out. Oh, Savachi's in the dirt. Across the line, San Cirillo wins the race. Zach Osborne wins this championship by two over Adam San Cirillo. The emotion comes out. He did everything he had to do, and he wins.
Fox, the 250 Fox. East Championship for 2017. Jenny, let's hear from hey, our chair. Zach, it's going good. I know that you have fought so hard to be in this place. And the way the race started for you to get to this point and win your championship. What is going through your mind right now? I don't know. I just have to say thank you to the Lord for this opportunity. I can't believe that I made that pass from, you know, I could see him, but it, he was so far away in, in my mind, you know, and to come back and pass him with one corner to go, it's unreal. Before this season, you had zero wins. You're now a champion. A champion. This is a moment you've been dreaming of. How does it feel? I've worked my whole life to be here, and a lot of people around me have as well. My wife, my parents, <laughs> just so many people that have shaped and molded my career into what it is today, and I can't thank them all enough. And I have to say thank you to this Rockstar and G Husqvarna Factory Racing team for believing in me, and it's just unreal. Congratulations. We'll let you enjoy this. Jeff Hewitt's 21st Amazing. after Amazing. the first lap. Oh and now he's wow. a 250 East champ. Here's the other side of the story. Joey Savacci wins at Minneapolis, thinks he has a shot at this championship, fought back so hard here tonight to put himself in a position, and it got very aggressive. Well, watch this right here. Savacci comes in. He's got two turns to go to the championship. Osborne put on one of the most incredible rides. This was a very, very aggressive move, and this could have won him the championship right here. It has won him the championship. I mean, from one more look right here, Savachi's on the inside, and watch Osborne. He just cuts even lower and just pushes the Kawasaki rider out of the way and on his way to the title. Jeff, we talk about it all the time. It's a, it gets to be a very aggressive sport oh, as Zach celebrates. Better. People are going to wonder, yeah, was that too aggressive? Oh, Pretty aggressive pass, but that's a, one of the most incredible rides I've ever seen here. There's a championship on the line, and it's a 250 East title, and it goes to Zach Osborne. Time for the final race of the night and the year. Here's Ricky Carmichael. Let's go to Jenny Taft. Well, hey, Ricky's going to have something to say coming up, but I have to tell you that I have been observing the two title contenders very closely today, and I can tell you very different approaches to tonight. Eli Tomac barely said anything to anyone throughout the day. There were times I saw him completely in the corner to himself, silent, stoic, very serious and ready for this race. He told me he has something to prove and that was really all he wanted to share with me. As for Ryan Dungey, the message throughout the entire day has been all about keeping everything business as usual. This is a race, this is a business, this is a job and we're not gonna think about this in any different way. His mechanic, Carlos Rivera told me, this is the stress that you like. This is the pressure you want to be in. This is what we work for, and that is the way they're approaching tonight. Ricky? Yeah, well, he's going to have to make sure he has his full focus right here on this rhythm lane. It is long, it is difficult, and it is fast. A lot of guys doing a bunch of different combinations here, really fun to watch. And if they make a mistake, they lose a lot of time. Keep your eyes on this rhythm lane right here, and they will be going fast down Monster Alley when they exit this stadium. In order to win the Supercross title, you have to ask yourself, how tough are you? How much are you willing to risk? Two men, one more battle, the ultimate prize. Ryan Dungey, the three-time champ. An image so clean, he's on a cereal box. Groomed by the man, consistency is his game plan. Eli Tomac, the challenger, the hunter from Colorado, with a world champion for a father, stalking his biggest prey and doing it with blazing speed. Tonight, they push themselves to the limit. One more time, one more gate drop. One more dance with the devil of disaster. Dungy, Tomac, Vegas, who wants it more? The Monster Energy Supercross Championship finale is ready to go. They're in the gate. They're set. Nerves at the highest level they've been all year. One of these two men will be champion when we drop the gate in Vegas. What a 
start by Dungey. He's got the lead. Tomax in fourth. The championship fight is on. Tomax trying to hustle to third. Dungey's trying to escape his grasp. In between them sits Baggett. Tomac makes quick work of Dean Wilson, puts himself in the third position. Here comes Tomac, reeling in Baggett. But Baggett won his he race earlier tonight. He's no slouch here in Vegas. What an epic start here for Ryan Dungey. He is such a clutch performer. Handles the pressure well. Watch Tomac blitz these whoops on his way to second. He's got Baggett. And the crowd come to their feet here at Sam Boyd Stadium. This is what everybody's been waiting to see. One more bar-to-bar battle between these two. How will it play out? Well, it's not surprising, Ralph, that both of these riders in crunch time here have found their way into first and second here right off the bat in this final main event. Tomac has got to win, and then he needs Dungey to finish fifth or worse which Dungy has been fourth or better in 51 straight main events. One of the most incredible uh, string of consistent performances ever in the sport. And the way this night is gone, the way that 250 main went, you just wonder if there's gonna be any sparks flying between Dungy and Tomac here over the next 18 minutes plus a lap. Remember, Dungey does not have to win the main event. Fourth or better if Tomac wins. Anderson's in third. Back and forth. Here's Tomac. He's got the lead. Dungey is back to third as Anderson comes by. Here comes Baggett. Fourth or better is what Dungey has got to be. And that's Reed back behind him in fifth. And we know Reed and Dungey have had their issues. Now Tomac cannot afford to let Anderson get by. Well, Tomac, here we are. Tomac's in the lead, but Dungey is up to third. What does Tomac do now? Just hope, I guess. Yeah, that's all he can do is hope, Ralph. He is, and he has to win this race. No ifs, ands, or buts about it, but I don't think we've seen the last of Ryan Dungey. Oh, Dungey oh, almost clips Anderson. Dungey looks like he is so fired up right now. He, he is riding really aggressive, Jeff, like you said. Man. I mean, he, he is mounting a comeback really quick. He was hung up in that turn for a while. Let's go back and watch Tomac getting past Dungey here. Well, Dungey, he hears the Kawasaki rider. Look what happens. Dungey has to actually stop and back up a little bit. Watch this second look right here as we have this close-up slow-mo. Dungey. Wants nothing to do with Tomac right there, but it stalls out a little bit. Very smart ride there. Anderson, boy, if Anderson gets around Tomac, that could be horrible news for the three. Anderson on that rock star Husqvarna. He's awful hungry for a win. Well, and don't forget Anderson and Ryan Dungey have been training partners with Eldon Baker for a number of years now. So Anderson's out there. They know, everybody knows the score of what's happening here. Jason Anderson hasn't won a race in 21 starts, matching his number plate. His last victory at Ford Field in Detroit in 2016. Ironically, that victory getting handed to him after a penalty was assessed to Ryan Dungey. Anderson really quick through the whoops and through the finish line area. So you can look at Anderson and Baggett as allies of Ryan Dungey. Tomac's only ally is his teammate, Josh Grant, who's now made his way into fifth, only five seconds off the lead. More on Anderson, here's Jenny. Well, and you mentioned it, guys. The fact that he hasn't had that win, that is something that has been bugging him, eating away at Jason Anderson. And I asked him about it today. He said, yeah, I mean, I didn't finish with a win. That is an important part about what I need to do. I know I'm good enough. So you got to believe that he's fighting for it the same way Eli Tomek would be. Looked over his shoulder, saw Dungey behind him, and Dungey's all over him. These two train together at Alvin Baker's facility in Florida. They know each other's style. They've pushed each other many times. And Dungey's inside, 
fighting for second as we watch Got from it. KTM Spider Cam. Dungey's back to second place. And Baggett has rolled up to the backside of Anderson as well. Pretty impressive ride by the reigning champion, Ryan Dungey. And you wonder, just how hard will he press for the win? Or is this chaos that's going on with Anderson and Baggett, you've got Grant back there lurking. 14 and a half minutes in one lap from either Ryan Dungey or Eli Tomac being crowned champion. With Tomac leading and Dungey in second, the points gap is six. Well, then you also wonder, Ralph, with the pressure of Ryan Dungey, if, he, if he's able to reel in Tomac right now, would that put any pressure on Tomac to possibly make a mistake? And Jeff looming over all of this was in an Anaheim at the season opener. Everybody knew this was a contract year for Ryan Dungey with the Red Bull KTM organization. And he said, I don't even want to think about it or talk about it till after Vegas. Could this be the last time Ryan Dungey competes for Monster Energy AMA Supercross FIM World Championship? And if he wins it here tonight, does he say so long to his career on the podium? Yeah, he's, he's focused right now. He's just thinking about getting to that checkered flag, not making any big mistakes. He knows that he has to stay present, stay in the moment. Here comes Muscan, has made his way past Chad Reed. Grant's in fifth. That's the Monster Energy Kawasaki teammate of Tomac. Tomac couldn't get around him last week in New Jersey. He needs Grant to start passing some guys and get up and make things difficult for Dungey here tonight if he could. And Grant really has this, this last few races. He had a fifth, he's had two fifths and a seventh. Really having a good season there for Monster Energy Kawasaki and you wonder if he could play a role in the outcome of this championship here before this checkered flag flies. Tomac, 3.6 seconds, 3.7 seconds up on Dungey. Tomac doing exactly what he has to do, win here tonight. Tomac on the right side of your screen. Grant starting to slip back. You see it's 8.3 seconds right now. Tomac st stretching it out a little bit over Dungey. Oh, don't, uh, Dungey just made up three tenths of a second. Dungey just had a better lap than Tomac. Dungey had the fastest lap of anyone at a 106.5. It was nine tenths of a second quicker than Tomac. Look at the lead now, 2.4. What an effort by Ryan Dungey. Watching Muskin. Muskin right now in sixth. He's behind Grant. Look Tomac. at the lead, Ralph. 2.2. Yeah, Dungey's cutting it way down. Tomac on his way to what could be his 10th victory of the year. And if he gets it, Jeff, he will be the sixth rider to win 10 races in a year. But there's one unique fact. The other five are Villapoto, McGrath, Stewart, Reed, and Carmichael, all of whom went on to win the championship that year. He could be the only one out of the six to win 10 and not the title. But he's got his hands full with Ryan Dungey, the three-time champ trying to join some rarefied air on his own by becoming one of the few to win four Supercross championships. Well, and Ralph, one week ago, we were in the same position, and Eli Tomac made the big mistake. The pressure of Ryan Dungey is behind him once again. How can Eli Tomac handle this pressure? Now the crowd's into it. Both riders know it. You can feel the energy of the crowd cheering you on. Where is Dungey making up the time? Ricky, where do you think he's getting it done? Well, I just think he's hitting his marks, he's riding good, and you gotta remember, sometimes it's easier to be the, uh, the hunter than the hunted. And 
I just think that Ryan's finding his groove, finding where Eli is better and making the adjustment. And uh, that's what Ryan Dungey does best. Remember, we saw that at round two when he's following Ken Roxon. That's well, the spot. One, one thing that's happening here, Jeff, with these two battling, everybody else is closing in. That could help Tomac here because he needs people to get around Dungey. Oh, Dungey almost jumps off the side of the track. And that's what he's got to be careful of. Focus on the big picture, right? Dungey he got traffic in front of him too, Jeff. Ralph, Dungey's going for the kill right now. He wants to prove to everyone that he is the champ and he is the best guy. I am totally surprised that Dungey is going after it like this. That's, Mistake. That's Stewart, but they get around Ronnie Stewart. Tomac knows Dungey is there. This is a man against man battle that everybody's been waiting to see with so much pride, not just championship at stake. Not one fan in the stadium is sitting right now, Ralph. They are on their feet. Carlos Rivera, Ryan Dungey's mechanic. With Watch this, this line. Board. Watch this line that Dungey has. It's quicker right through here. There's Lindsey Dungey, Ryan's wife. And look at this, Anderson and Baggett are right there. And that, like we said, could be a big change in this championship. Because if Tomac wins, oh, oh Dungey almost Dungey goes down. A mistake, yep. And that's the thing, with those other riders tight like that, if he makes a mistake, he's gonna find himself fourth or worse. He could be in trouble of losing not just the position, but the championship. Well, and if Dungey can't make the pass on Tomac, at what point does he say, okay, I need to be smart and I need to, to lay up and just get fourth or better. Grant, who's in fifth, is just four seconds behind here. There's a lot of racing left, eight minutes and a plus lap. a lap. And I we mean, saw the 250 championship and how wild it was. And Ricky, we know how slick and challenging this track is. This one's wide open still. Uh, it is wide open, guys. Anything can happen. You can see, like you said, Anderson Baggett closing up. Grant is right there. However, I don't. I, I, don't, I, I still feel like Dungey has the advantage. He can check up a little bit and close back up. I think he just wait, wait, wait. Maybe that he's trying to just stalk Eli, Eli Tomac and force him into a mistake, possibly. Speaking of mistakes, Marvin Muskan has gone down. He's headed to the pit area. There he is. Frankie laid them his mechanic over to talk to his rider. Meanwhile, his teammate still fighting for the championship, chasing Tomac. Pretty much a clear track right now. Just one lap rider about a straightaway ahead. Tomac's done a really good job of handling the pressure at this point. And I tell you, I am I, I am so impressed with Ryan Dungey right now also about how aggressive he is because through most of Dungey's career, we, you know, he's been such a smart rider. He's been so patient, but right now he looks driven. And this spot right here is his place. If he can get to the inside of Ryan Dungey, he changed up his line this time. I mean, if he can get to the inside of Tomac right here, then that corner there could be where he could make the pass. They've got Ray in front of him. Oh, he misses the quad. Oh, there goes Dungey around the outside. Tomac becomes a hunter again. Something he's very used to and does in his spare time. And his prey that he's stalking now is the number one plate that goes with Ryan Dungey. Wow. Six minutes, one lap left in the season. Tomac's into Dungey. Dungey's off track. When is he coming back on? Oh, how's that play out? Here comes Anderson and Baggett. Oh, did and there's Grant. He, did he get on smoothly, Jeff? Was that the right spot for him it to was. get on? It was. That was the same okay. place on the track. Grant could play a role in the outcome of this championship also. That's Tomac's only ally. This is going to be incredible to the end as Grant gets around Baggett now. Here comes Dungey on the attack once again. Starting to work the inside line right there into that tight left-hander. Jenny, what's on the pit board? You guys, the message from Carlos Rivera is be smart, and you can see it in his face. 
that he wants Dungy to ride with a little bit more there. He is telling him to be smart. Right now, the latest thing he's saying is six laps to go. I'll keep you guys posted on what Carlos is riding. Being smart, but Dungy, the way that the competition is tonight, he does not have the luxury of being able to just lay up. Look at that. You've got five riders on the triple jump. If Dungy gets fifth and Tomac wins, Tomac wins the title. Here, that's a great point, Jeff, because joining that group is Chad Reed as well. The sixth place rider in blue is right here with him. What oh. happens, Ralph, if Grant gets up to Dungy? What? <laughs> I mean, it might not be a smooth pass. It might not be a smooth pass. And you've seen tonight just how gnarly this track is and the way that 250 main went, the way this main event's going, wow. And Ricky, all these riders are hungry. They all want to win. They're all fighting for bonus money. <laughs> oh, they Grant, are. This Some is the quad. Oh. Reed. Grant Around makes a two. big mistake. The two-time champ, Reed, capitalizes. Let's get back to Ricky. Yeah, I mean, all these guys are going for it, for sure. I, I can't tell you what's going to happen. I, I, I am hesitant to think that Anderson and Baggett will pass Dungy just because of the KTM Husky support. So we're going to see what happens there. And Ralph, this ride that oh, back the back is out. Problem. He's out. OK, that takes one down. We know that earlier in the season, Chad Reed and Ryan Dungy, they have some problems. Now Chad Reed has worked his way into fourth. He's only about two seconds behind Dungy. Could yeah. Chad Reed play a role in the outcome of this title? It's Tomac, wow. Dungy, Anderson, Reed, and Grant. The Watch only Dungy, one double. in this group to help Dungy in any way, shape, or form is Anderson. Here's Dungy. Listen to the crowd. Look at them all on their feet here at Sam Boyd Stadium. Three minutes, one lap to go between these two and the title. I cannot believe that the 22 of Chad Reed, who's had such an up and down season here in the final race, is now in position. He's right there, he's fourth. He's looking at a podium. Reed's Un best finish, Jeff, ride. was a second in Arizona. Could he get on the podium here again tonight? That's his only podium of 2017 so far. Wow. Man, what a ride these two have been putting on. Tomac starting to stretch it out a little bit here. And he can count Reed. six tenths and 1.3 seconds. That's a huge gap the way these two have raced here tonight. Barsha, a lapper. He's 16th. Hey, Ralph, last time around, Reed was at a 106. Your three leaders were 108. Reed is absolutely on the gas. And here comes Dungy, setting up another attack. Trying to get to the inside of Tomac. Boy, they love that inside line there. One of the slowest corners we've seen all season. You gotta wonder if it'll impact this championship fight as this race winds down. Closing in on a minute and a half and one lap to go. I mean, this Dungy, should not be an issue here at all. Dungy has to be smart, right? He's got he's got Anderson behind him, which shouldn't be a threat, if you will. But Reed is where the real pressure could come in this final lap or two. Any little mistake by Dungy. Look at and that how, could give Tomac Jeff, the title. Look at how hard those whoops are. Oh, oh and Reed. Reed! Reed's going after Anderson! He got him! Oh, man! Yeah, here comes Anderson back inside on Reed! Reed's in the bails! And Tomac Anderson is stuck at the top of the finish line, John. He finally got over it. Oh, man! That could have been just... Just the type of luck that Dungy needed because Reed was on the move. Jeff, what that did was spread out that top five, which is exactly the oh, play makes a mistake. that Anderson or that Dungy was looking for. Oh, man. Dungy has held his composure. Tomac making little mistakes all over the place right now, but Dungy doing exactly what he needs to do. Well, now he can breathe. Dungy can exactly. actually breathe because Grant is far back. Here he comes. 
and even further back will be Anderson Wilson now in fifth and Reed in sixth. So this is what Dungey needed. He can just follow Tomac at this point. Countdown clock's gonna be at zero. White flag next time around. Watch Lindsay. Watch the snap. White flag is out. Watch right here. Dungey's gonna go to the left side. To, oh, no, doesn't jump it. He's checking up. Smart move by Ryan Dungey. Dungey not putting the pressure on now. Will he go for the exclamation point? Tomac half a lap away from his 10th win of the season. It's hard to conceive that he would win 10 races out of 17 and not the title. But that's where they're at right now with the points. It's six points separating the two. And Jeff, here's the other thing. With the controversy after last week with Mooscan, did he move over? Didn't he move over? It was three points. If they finish this way, it's six between the two. And there it goes, Dungey. There's the exclamation point one way or the other. Tomac comes back, takes Dungey out of it. There goes Grant by. Grant goes by. Where's the rest? Grant will move into second place. Anderson. Checkered flag for Anderson. Tomac second. Grant is third. Dungey is fourth. Wins the championship by five points over Eli Tomac. The 2017 Monster Energy AMA Supercross FIM World Champion for the fourth time in his career is Ryan Dungey. Two-time champion himself, Chad Reed, congratulating him. They've had their moments this year. Dean Wilson with a thumbs up. Christian Craig, Blake Baggett, and the fireworks go off. Are those not the two best main events you've ever seen? Was that the last main event in Monster Energy Supercross for Ryan Dungey? Only he knows. And what a way to finish it off if it is. The goggles come off. And with that fourth championship, he joins some incredibly rarefied air. Joining Showtime. There's Carlos Rivera. Smart. That's what it is, buddy. What the heck? I know, but you see, I didn't want you to pass it. That's what happened. I wanted to tell you this from the beginning of the season. This is Fox. You're Fox. Thank you, my friend. Love you, man. That means a lot to me. I'm dedicated to it. Thank you. I love you, bud. My man. Oh, we did it! Give me five. Give me five. Yeah! 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 There's Ryan. his dad, Troy. As you celebrate. That's awesome, man. Give me a All right. I'll try to keep it quick so you can celebrate. But Ryan, you're a four-time Supercross champ. And what we saw tonight, the fight and the oh adversity, God. truly, you have faced all season long to get it done. How does it feel to do it now for the fourth time? Man, that was a season of never give up. I mean, it was uh, tough from the get-go, but... Uh, we did it, you know, and that last race, I had no, I did not expect it to be like that, you know. I expected a good race, but those cheap shots were unbelievable. I couldn't believe it, but uh, we survived it and uh, and we got through. We got through it, and is this moment any different, any more gratifying because of the season you've had? It is, you know, I didn't win all the races, but we are the, the points is what matters at the end, and we fought hard tooth and nail, and uh, my team, my everybody behind me, my wife, I mean, this was the most challenging season of my whole entire career and, and the hardest. And uh, it's just nice to be here and sit up top. And Eli is a tough competitor. He's a great guy, you know, and uh, that was a hard fought race. And man, from the beginning, and I uh, just tried to hold my pace and keep her steady. I know the guys are behind me, but I know if he won, I couldn't finish fourth or worse. So it was, uh, 
tough situation, and uh, with him out front, it was he was controlling the race. Well, what a fight tonight. I'll let you enjoy this with the family, and we will talk with you on the podium. Congrats, Ryan. Three victories, 13 podiums, 17 top fives, never worse than fourth in a finish. He enjoins a very elite group. Jeremy McGrath, Showtime, the king of Supercross, seven championships. The greatest of all time, the GOAT, Ricky Carmichael, five. Ryan Villopoto, four. Ryan Dungey now with four. James Stewart and Chad Reed with two each. That is some rarefied air. And there he is. Giving the thumbs up to Tomac, gives it back. A hard fought battle, and then the celebration is on here in Vegas. A thrilling conclusion to a remarkable season. Welcome back to Monster Energy Supercross on FS1. I'm Jenny Taft, and joining me now on the podium, John Gallagher, Supercross Race Director, and Kevin Crowther, AMA Director of Racing, for a very special presentation. Thank you very much. Ryan, I got to say, in all the years I've been doing this and all the plates that I've handed you, this race tonight was probably one that will go down in history as being one of the most exciting races here in Vegas. And I got to say congratulations to you and the uh, Red Bull KTM team for a great year and coming up here and doing this again. It gives me great pleasure on behalf of the American Motorcycles Association and the FIM to present you with the 2017 Monster Energy AMA Supercross and FIM World Championship 450SX number one plate. Congratulations, Ryan. Time. Well, Ryan, you now have joined an elite group. Jeremy McGrath, Ricky Carmichael, Ryan Villapoto, now Ryan Dungey, with four or more Supercross championships. What does it mean to be a part of that group? Uh, it's a dream come true. You know, as a little kid, I, I dreamed of uh, being in this position and just racing dirt bikes in general. I had to make a just to be good enough to make a living at it. And this is just, uh, this tops it all off, you know. I, uh, this season was one of the toughest of, uh, of my career. And, uh, you know, it, and, and it means that much more. You know, we went through a lot of tough times, a lot of battles, a lot of adversity. And um, I can't thank everybody enough for sticking behind me. And I just want to say, I want to give glory to God. You know, I could not have got through this season if it weren't for him. So I give him all the credit. And I want to say, you know, even with uh, Eli and the team Kawasaki crew, they didn't make it easy on us. You know, Eli was on it. His speed was amazing, and uh, I have a lot of respect for that guy. And, you know, we got to, both teams, we got to do everything we can to, to, to clinch a title, you know, and uh, there's a lot of respect there. So thanks, thanks to my whole team, Red Bull KTM, and my beautiful wife and uh, my whole family, my mom and dad who comes to all these races. And uh, it's, this is, I, um, coming into this season, I really wanted the three-peat. That was the goal, you know, and I really wanted to do it again. And especially coming off of an injury last year was tough and uh, we overcame a lot and uh, you know I just uh, this is it's kind of hasn't set in yet but this is amazing and I never pictured racing past 10 years of my life and uh, this is number 11 year and uh, I didn't think I'd go much past that and we did so thank uh, thank for everybody the team everybody I forget and it's amazing season thank you well Ryan I have to ask you said at the beginning of the season you talk about your future in Vegas so what is next for Ryan Dungey I don't know it's taken a toll on me, but uh, things like this makes it that much sweeter and makes you just want to keep going. But uh, we'll reevaluate, and I got a lot of stuff to figure out these next few weeks before the outdoors, and uh, we'll see. You know, I, I want to perform. If I'm coming back, I want to be able to do it at my uh, at the highest potential. Like you saw this year, the challenge is only getting more, the competition's only getting tougher, and uh, we got to be ready for that. You know, it's it's racing, so uh, we'll, we'll see. We'll reevaluate, and I'll, I'll hopefully I have an answer here for you guys soon. <laughs> Congratulations, Thanks. Ryan. Four-time Supercross champion. Guys. Don't forget, if you're tuning in for NHRA qualifying from Atlanta, we will have it for you as soon as we are done with our post-race activities here as we wrap up the 2017 Monster Energy Supercross season. Five points, the difference. After 17 rounds of racing in 18 weeks, Manaheim to Daytona to Indy to Toronto, here we are in Vegas. What a season. 
Yeah, and I mean, you look at that, uh, the number that sticks out to me is Eli Tomac, second in points, but nine wins. Absolutely dominated the season as far as wins. We talked about it over and over, speed versus consistency, speed versus consistency. This man right here is the epitome of consistency in Supercross. And, yeah, and as he and his wife, Lindsay, walk over to take more pictures while things take place on the podium, Ryan becomes the fifth rider to win three championships in a row. Jeff, these are Hall of Fame first ballot stats. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no doubt about it. No doubt about it. Exceptional. Jason Anderson gets the win tonight, Jenny. And it was an incredible win for you, Jason. And today you said, hey, I didn't get the win yet. So for you to top it off with that kind of performance, what kind of building block does that provide for you as your season, as your career progresses now? Yeah, you know, I, I really wanted to get that win. And uh, it was it was a tough position I was in because I didn't want to, like, disrespect them and get in their battle or anything. I wanted them to do their deal. Yeah. and uh, But I felt like I was a little bit better than them the whole time. And then I was like, it, I got passed by Reedy, and then I was like, yeah, I made some moves. But I was really excited to get that win. And first and last one of the season, but I'm, I'm psyched. You know, I want to thank the whole Rockstar Energy Husqvarna team. Uh, you know, Thor, Hilton, Atlas, Aero, Dragon, Alpine Star, the whole crew, and I'm just excited for uh, to get this win, and I really want to do more next year. Thanks for your time, Jason. That's his third career victory when he says first and last. He was talking about the fact that last year he won the season opener at Anaheim, and now he wins the last race of the year in 2017. Josh Grant did exactly what his teammate Eli Tomac was hoping for, one of the best rides of his year as he fights for a podium. Yeah, nice to see Dean Wilson there, also Anderson's teammate on Rockstar Husqvarna, have a best uh, finish of the season also. Let's hear from the Monster Energy squad. Here's Jenny. Well, guys, I have to say it was a pretty remarkable way to finish this season. And now, Eli, for you, it was a, a season to be proud of. You had a lot of unbelievable performances, so many wins. What is your take on the way the season wrapped up for you tonight? Well, for us, it was just a huge improvement over the year before. Um, last year, you know, I think we had too high of expectations, and uh, that can catch up with you. You know, we weren't as prepared as we thought we would be. And, um, you know, this year we made the strides forward, you know, and, and, and uh, you know, we, we won races, but uh, made a few too many mistakes, you know, and, and cost us the you know, the, the whole thing there. So um, fought as hard as we could, you know. I, I'm, I'm really excited about just the, the way it went and, and looking forward to the, the seasons to come. So um, thank you to Monster Energy, Kawasaki, Alpine Star, Bell, Oakley, PPG, just everyone around us, um, my mechanic, Kranz, the whole team. Um, it's, it's cool to see the spot we're in. You know, we didn't get it, get it all the way done, but, uh, you know, we have, we'll keep our heads up and keep uh, swinging for it next year. Thanks for your time, Eli. And Josh, for you, I know you and your teammate were in this. I mean, it was a season to be proud of for you as well. So how would you evaluate the way you performed tonight and really overall this season for you, Supercross? Yeah, I mean, it was uh, started out really slow. And obviously, towards the end, we've been getting better and better. Uh, I knew tonight I needed to get in front of Dungey to you know, help Eli with the points. And um, yeah, it was uh, it was a tough. So I just tried my best you know, through the whole race. And yeah. That was it, so we're good. You fought for it, you fought for it, and definitely something for you guys to definitely yeah. be proud of. Thank yeah, you. No, thanks. You know, obviously Monster for uh, and Kawasaki for the help. They've uh, stuck behind me, and I'm just uh, really excited to move on to outdoors and, uh, you know, start shifting some gears. <laughs> Thank you, Josh. Guys. Well, it's time to hand out the medals. There is an AMA championship, and then, of course, the world championship. That is the FIM's involvement with this championship season. We're going to be handing out those FIM medals here next. They make their way up onto the podium. We'll have Dirk Deneuve and Tony Skillington from the FIM to present the medals. Ryan will go to the FIM banquet as well overseas to receive world championship accolades over there at the end of the 2017 racing season as the two title combatants. Trying to listen in a little bit. There's Tony Skillington. Muskin finishes 22nd here tonight, but he's third in the championship. Dirk Deneb, the motocross commission coordinator, handing the medals to Tony Skillington, the FIM motocross commission director. 
and places the silver medal on second place finisher in the championship, Eli Tomac, and the gold medal for the FIM World Championship. And Tony Skillington, FIM Motocross Commission Director, once again going to the four-time Monster Energy AMA Supercross FIM World Champion, Ryan Dungey. Don't forget the NHRA qualifying from Atlanta comes up as soon as we are done, moments from now, here on FS1. Now, before we say goodbye, Jeff, let's go back and take a look at that 250 showdown. Dave Coombs East-West showdown. What a race it was. And this moment here, when Zach Osborne gets into Joey Savacci. Too aggressive or fair play? Well, this is the way that Osborne has approached the season. He's done this multiple times. Uh, Savacci just kind of hasn't had that edge in this moment. And Savacci, or Osborne, after being down in the first turn, he knows that everything's on the line right now. There's one straightaway and one turn to go, and Osborne goes in and just absolutely takes the title away from Joey Savacci. You say it's cool or not? I'm saying it's for the title, and you got to do it. Ricky, is that something that can be protested in your belief, or are you okay with it? Oh, I'm okay with it. Hey, that that like Jeff said, that is for the championship. It was one corner away from the finish line. You have to do that. And you know what? I, I look back, and Savachi should have never been in that position. So, you know what? Kudos to uh, Zach Osborne. He came from dead last to win that championship. And Joey should have never been in that position. And you have to do whatever you can to get that championship. So I think it was, uh, I think, I think it was fair play. Fair play. Okay. Well, 2017 season is wrapping up. Only thing left to do now is celebrate. There's Ryan's mom, Michelle, just to his right there as he continues to share hugs with friends and people who've helped him along the way. There's Alden Baker in the black hat right there, giving him a hug. That's Mom Michelle taking another picture. Don't forget the NHRA coming up from Atlanta in just a minute. Anthony Paggio from Oakley helps him out with his goggles. Well, what a year it's been for Juliana Daniel, Jenny Taft, Ricky Carmichael, Ricky Carmichael and Jeff Emick, my buddy. What a year it's been, bro. That was awesome. Huh? How about it? Kristen Balboni. Thank you for everything you've done with us this year. Caitlin Vinci. Yep, they've helped us. Jamie Little helped us all year long. For all of us, thank you for a great season. Congratulations, Ryan Dungey, the 2017 champ.